My name is Doug Parker, host of the Cruise Radio Podcast, and today we're going to take a deck tour of Carnival Ecstasy. Before we get to the video, if you like this tour and you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to the channel and give the video a thumbs up. All right, so on to Carnival Ecstasy. She was launched in 1991. She carries 2,052 guests, 855 feet long, and 70,367 gross registered tons. As far as staterooms, she has 54 suites, 98 balcony cabins, 468 ocean view cabins, 389 interior cabins, and 25 accessible cabins. So right out of the gate, Ecstasy is an old ship. She was the second Fantasy class ship, the first one being Fantasy in 90, and then Ecstasy came along in 1991. The ship was last refurbed in 2017, getting the fun ship 2.0 enhancements. This ship a little bit different than the other ships because deck one, two, and three are all crew areas. And then the Riviera deck starts on deck number four. So deck four, five, and six, and a little bit of seven are passenger staterooms. Uh, deck seven is also where you'll find guest relations, the shore excursion desk, the atrium bar, the Park West Gallery. You'll also find those two glass elevators that take you from deck number seven up to deck number 12, and where you'll embark and disembark the ship. Going up to deck number eight, you're going to have the Circle C Club around the atrium, and then the Neon Bar, which is the piano bar on this ship. And I will say that this bar, no neon light was spared in creating the neon bar. I mean, there are ships on the wall. There's martini glasses, as you can see. Uh, a lot going on in here. Something like this stands the test of time because neon lights, they just pop and the photography around this is so great. Just past this place is going to be the Wind Star Dining Room. So there are two main dining rooms on this ship. Both are located on deck number eight. Both of them are single story. So this one is the Wind Star Dining Room. One dining room is for traditional dining, which is the 6 and 8, 15 p.m. dining time. And the other one is going to be for any time dining. Now, there is that galley blockage, I guess we'll call it, on deck eight between the two dining rooms. That is where the galley is located. So if you're going out of the back of the Windstar dining room, you're going to have a wall with elevators. You'll have to use the stairs to go up to deck number nine or deck number seven if you want to transit that area because it is blocked off midship for the galley on deck number eight. And then the aft dining room on deck number eight is called the Windsong dining room. This is a cool area because there's actually a staircase that goes down into this dining room. So you could go, if you're at the Alchemy Bar, which is one deck above, you could walk down and go right into the main dining room. There's also your normal staircases and elevators there as well. And speaking of elevators, there are three banks of elevators on this ship. There's four forward, four mid, and four aft. You'll also have those two glass elevators going up and down over the main atrium. Those main atrium glass elevators are really, really cool photo spot as well. The main show theater on Carnival Ecstasy is called the Blue Sapphire Lounge. That actually takes up deck number eight and deck number nine. So the Atlantic deck and the promenade deck. Deck number eight, obviously going to be the ground level. Deck number nine, I would normally say the cheap seats, but it's such an intimate space. I think it only holds around 12 to 1300 people in here. So it, there's really not a bad seat in the house. It's a really warm, I guess, intimate environment. I've actually seen a concert in here um, a few years ago when they were doing that carnival, uh, what do they call it, Carnival Live, and all the seats were good. Outside of deck number eight, before you come into the theater, you will have the library out there. Also, the duty-free liquor shop and where you can get your cigarettes and some jewelry shops right here at the atrium on deck eight before you walk into the Blue Sapphire Lounge. All right, up to deck number nine. Deck number nine is going to be the second level of the theater. It's called the promenade deck on this ship. Coming outside of the theater, you're going to have a couple of different spaces here. The first one is the Pixels Gallery, followed by the game room, which has your typical cosmic claw games, air hockey, things like that. Also an entrance to the theater right here in the game room as well. They also have that power hour in the game room. So if you want to play reduced games for 50% off, check out when the power hour is. Still have the old school photo gallery here on Carnival Ecstasy where they have the actually print the photos out and put them on the wall. Unlike the new ships where it is all digital. After walking through the photo gallery, you'll come to City Lights Boulevard. That is the promenade on this ship on deck number nine. So the promenade is going to stay all the way to the starboard side. The first space you'll come to is the Crystal Palace Casino. You're going to have your typical slot machines in here. Also your table games, your electronic games, the claw machine, the skill machine, the quarter machine, pretty much anything that will take the money from your pocket and put it into their pocket. That's what you'll find in the casino. 
Coming out of the casino, you'll have Cherry on Top and the Carnival Adventure Store. There you have your candy, also your outdoor adventure type gear, like your lanyard, your waterproof lanyards for your phone, and different things like that inside the Carnival Adventure Shop. The casino bar just past the Carnival Adventure Store, and that's where there is smoking allowed on this ship. Um, I will say I was on the ship when there was only a few people on here, and smoking didn't seem to be an issue. In fact, when I walked through the casino, I couldn't even tell it was a smoking casino. However, you know, you have a couple of hundred people smoking in here. Probably a different story, but at first sniff, I guess we'll say or first smell, uh, it wasn't that bad at all. Just past the casino, you'll see Chinatown. That's going to be one of their lounges. A lot, a lot of times Chinatown is used for karaoke in different little meetings throughout the voyage. And here, maybe some trivia is held in Chinatown as well. Coming out of Chinatown, you're going to come up to the coffee shop. That's going to be your specialty coffees. Uh, it is extra, so it is not included in your cruise fare. If you want to get a coffee here or a snack, that is going to cost you a little bit of extra money. Just past the coffee shop is Stripes Nightclub. That's going to be the disco on the ship. little dance floor in here, DJ spinning. Uh, goes all the way back to the port side. There's windows in here. This is one of those late night venues that will go until 1 or 2 in the morning. So if you want to party a little bit, head to Stripes Nightclub. Coming out of the nightclub and heading aft, you're going to go past the $10 store. One of those stores where everything is $10. Then you'll approach the Alchemy Bar, which is at the entrance to the Starlight Lounge. Starlight Lounge is where the Punchliner Comedy Club is held on this ship. Um, you know, your late night comedians in here. Seating doesn't seem to be an issue on these fantasy class ships if you're trying to see the comedian. Now, yeah, you do want to get here early. I mean, don't come rolling up at 11 o'clock for an 11 p.m. show and thinking you're, you're going to get a decent seat. But use common sense and you should have no problem with all the space in here. Just aft of the Punchliner Comedy Club or the Starlight Lounge is the Serenity area. Serenity kind of interesting on this ship because on these fantasy class ships, Serenity is always on the very back of the ship and your people are kind of looking down at you. So the people who are eating one deck above you on the Lido deck, there's these wings that come out on the side of these fantasy class ships. They're actually looking down onto you, but there are two hot tubs back here. There's a couple of Shaded spots, you know, you have the spot that kind of goes back a little bit and that's covered So that's good if you don't want to be roasting in the Sun and a lot of chairs back here kind of a small area So if you want to you know get a chair in serenity You might want to get out here early, but don't chair hog because uh, they were enforcing on my sailing Up to deck number 10. We'll start the video in the very back Which is kind of the extra outside seating for the Lido deck marketplace now both port and starboard side have this outside area um, on the very back. Also, outside of the buffet area, there are little walkways with tables as well. So if you want to sit there and enjoy your lunch while overlooking the ocean, you can do that. Inside, there's the Pizza Pirate, which is Carnival's complimentary 24-hour pizza. Also, there's a bar back here and the Carnival Deli. The ice cream machine and the salad bar take up this big oval space right here in the middle. And then on each side of the salad bar, there are a different dessert bar. So port side desserts and starboard side desserts. And then just forward of this area is the buffet and drink machines. Walking outside of the Lido Deck, I keep calling it the Lido Deck Marketplace. That's not the real name. The real name is Panorama Bar and Grill, but you know what I'm talking about. So on the starboard side is Guy's Burger Joint, and on the port side is the Blue Iguana Cantina, and in the middle there's like your chicken fingers and fries and different things of the sort. You'll also find additional seating out here on both the port and starboard side, and right here under the shaded area. Now there is a pool out here on the Lido Deck area, obviously, but there is only one pool, and it's the forward part of the Lido Deck. So kind of you have your food area, then you have a pavilion where the steel, gr uh, steel drum guy will be playing or a band will be playing. And then just past that, you have two hot tubs and a pool. They call it the resort style pool on this ship. Now, if you're on deck number 10 right here, but deck number 11 overlooks the pool one deck up. And then on the port and starboard side, like on other carnival ships, you're going to have the Blue Iguana Tequila Bar. If you're looking forward, that'll be on your left-hand side. And then the Red Frog Rum Bar will be on your right-hand side. And then if you keep walking straight through these sliding glass doors, that'll take you right into the Grand Atrium on Carnival Ecstasy. Just forward of the Grand Atrium, there's going to be an observation deck on deck number 10 where you can go out in the very front of the ship. Up to deck number 12 is the Spa Carnival and Fitness Center. So if you walk into Spa Carnival, a little different than the, say, newer class of Carnival ships. So on this ship, you walk in and you walk to the left and you go down this corridor, you're going to dead end right into the Fitness Center. 
you know, not a huge fitness center, but we're not talking about a really big ship here either. So you're going to have some treadmills in here, some free weight machines. Also, an aerobic studio is within the fitness center as well. Now, on the other side of the, when you walk into Spa Carnival, if you were to walk right, those would be the locker rooms. Now, the locker rooms have a sauna and a steam room, and they are not co-ed. So men, you have your own. Ladies, you have your own. Also, larger showers in here in a nice place to, if you want, if two people are trying to get ready at the same time to hop in one of these showers and, you know, knock two birds out with one stone to get ready. You'll also find lockers in here and fresh towels for the gym or the shower. As I mentioned a few moments ago, deck number 11 does look down onto deck number 10 out by the pool, which is the Lido deck. And then deck number 11 is the veranda deck. If you were to keep going all the way back on the veranda deck, deck number 11, you'd have your lifeboats on both the port and starboard side. And then all the way back is the Waterworks Aqua Park back here. You have a couple of slides, a couple of kitty slides. And also some space back here just to relax and lay out by the pool. If you want to get away from the kids, though, you might not want to lay out back here because I'm sure during the sailing, a lot of them will be kind of drawn to this water park. So you could have a lot of, hey, mom, watch this by the pool. I should also mention that Camp Ocean is located on the forward part of this deck. And then going up to deck number 14, which is the sun deck, here you're going to have the mini golf course, the jogging track, also another observation point. So if you want to, you know, watch the ship sail away or get a really, really good view of the ship going underneath the Dames Point Bridge in Jacksonville, this is the place to stand. And if you look down a couple of decks, down to deck number 10, you'll have that observation deck out there as well. So you can either choose to be on deck number 14 or deck number 10 all the way forward for your secret deck area, I guess you could call it. And then as you make your way around the jogging track outside of the observation area, that's where you're going to have more chairs and uh, overlook that Lido deck area. One thing I didn't mention when we were talking about the Lido deck and the Lido pool area, they do not have a giant dive in movie screen by the pool on this ship. Um, so I guess that'll about do it for our tour of Carnival Ecstasy. If you like this video and you want to see more ship tours, subscribe to the channel and give the video a thumbs up. My name is Doug Parker. I'm the host of Cruise Radio and the Daily Cruise Radio News Briefs. You can find either of those where you listen to your favorite podcast. Just type in Cruise Radio or Cruise Radio News. So what do you think about Carnival Ecstasy? Have you sailed her or do you have a cruise booked on her? Let me know in the comments below and thank you so much for watching.